Max, after what went down this weekend, who's in more trouble, Cavs or Warriors? The Warriors are in more trouble than the Cavs because the Warriors have a real contender in the Western Conference. The Boston Celtics are a good team. They ain't a super team. But let me tell you something about these Houston Rockets. Mm. And SportsCenter sent out an Instagram about this yesterday. With James Harden, Chris Paul, and Clint Capella in the lineup, they are 17 and 0. 17 and 0. And they're not just beating teams, they're smoking teams. And now they've beaten the Warriors two out of three. Clint Capella is a matchup nightmare for Pachulia. But, it's, but really what we're talking about here is this James Harden-Chris Paul pairing. On paper, it, does, it is not obvious that it would be amazing. You know, obviously you don't think that it would, Chris Paul's going to make a team worse, but you don't know how much better. But, oh, my God, so much better. Not only is Chris Paul the captain of the defense, but Mike D'Antoni has figured out the way to use Chris Paul on that team, which is, you know, he goes to, to, OK, to uh, the Clippers. It's Lob City, but Chris Paul, before he got to the Clippers... You know, he was a score-first guard, and he can be that again on this team oftentimes. He and James Harden aren't all, always on the floor together. So basically, what the Rockets have is 48 minutes of somebody is going to kill you on the offensive side between Harden and Chris Paul, and way, uh, when they are on the floor together, my God. So the Warriors, while they seem to be firing on more or less all cylinders, and the Cavs do, are not, Stephen A., the Cavs do not have a team like the Houston Rockets to contend with. And I'm here to tell you, the Houston Rockets could actually beat the Golden State Warriors in the playoffs. Well, just do me a favor and please remember you said that a week from now, a month from now, a couple of months from now, as opposed to trying to sit up there and, and, and just reorganize what you're saying. Be consistent, and I'll appreciate that opinion even more in the weeks to come. However, I respectfully disagree with you, Max Kellerman. The, the Cleveland Cavaliers don't even look like a team right now. They just look like a bunch of parts that have been put together. There's no cohesion with them whatsoever. And by the way, let's stop not, let's not stop, or rather, let's stop just talking about Boston. Let's talk about Toronto because DeMar DeRozan has developed a jump shot. Mm. Let's pay attention to that. And now mm. they're shooting better and Dwayne Casey is one of the best coaches in the entire NBA. This man's the real deal as a coach. Let's not ignore them. Let's not. I still haven't given up hope on the Washington Wizards. I may be disgusted that Bradley Beal can't seem to score in the fourth quarter, but I still believe he's an all-star caliber player and I got mad respect for him. I'm just concerned about his relationship with John Wall and having team meetings. Everybody's coming out talking about they ain't on the same page in the team meeting in and accomplish what it was supposed to accomplish. But I still believe in the Washington Wizards, which is why I keep getting on them, especially as dysfunctional as the Cleveland Cavaliers look, and particularly the liability that Isaiah Thomas, only because of his size, has because you have to have him on the court. He can score on anybody, but you can also score on him because of his miniature size. But let me go to you out west and point out this, Max Kellerman, and I'll ask rhetorical questions before I get back to you. Clay Thompson going to go 3 for 11 too often? and really not score about 10 or 11 points? Is Klay Thompson going to get outscored by Luke Mba Amute? Really? You really want to count on that? You sure? Based on what we saw this weekend? Not to mention the fact that Steph Curry shot about like 6 for 20. Is that really going to happen? The only person that showed up with Kevin Durant Saturday night was Swaggy P, which was Nick Young. Nobody else showed up offensively, and Luke Mba Amute you know, outscored a couple of starters. I'm supposed to rely on that? I mean, stop it. Nope. Just stop it. They played Houston, three times. The Houston, Rockets have won twice. Let me say this. Whoa, 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 whoa. The home opener. The, the, the opener for the season, Max. We don't really count that first game of the season and last night. And what so about be, being 17-0? and 0. You know, well, What about oh, being 17-0? No, and 0. I, Hold on. I'm answering you. I'm answering you. I believe that the Houston Rockets are a legitimate threat. I believe that the Houston Rockets are big time. I believe that the Houston Rockets, I hope they make it to the conference finals because I love what I'm seeing from Dan Tony and I love CP3 and James Harden together. You're just coming to that party. I loved it from day one. But my biggest no, issue no, is stop, that, time that out. Cleveland stop right is dysfunctional. There. Stop. What's up? Stop. APB out. No, 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 no. Wrong, because you are the guy, Stephen A. Smith, who when I was saying, hey, maybe the Rockets are the biggest threat to the Warriors in the West, you were saying, no, OKC, okay, that's the preseason. We okay, got see. tape. I yes, will... that's not what I'm saying. 
You're misconstruing what I'm saying. I'm saying that you were talking about. I'm not saying that I said that Houston was more of a threat than OKC. That's on me. I know I said that. Yeah, I did. And to some degree, I'm sorry, I'm not sleeping on OKC. But what I'm saying to you is, you were so you were so suspect about CP3 that you wanted. That's where I'm going with that.